All right, so we did our lab on the intermediate axis theorem, otherwise known as the tennis racket theorem. Who's that? This is Roger Federer, who plays tennis. <laughs> so this lab um, originated from all the board, board times. I was in tennis practice, and I would just sit there and kind of flip my racket up in the air. And uh, I noticed that when held it like this with the racket parallel, the frame parallel to the ground. When I threw it up, it would rotate in the air uh, when I hadn't even put any force on that axis, and I was curious as to why. And so this is what we studied. And um, after some research, we learned about the intermediate axis theorem. And so if you take this bad boy, you'll see that there are three axes on which you could flip it. There's this way. It's nice and smooth, and then this way, and then there's also this way in which it, did you guys see that, how it turned in the air? No. Can you do it again? Yeah. Yeah. One more time. Can we get a book? Yeah? No. No. Yeah, yeah I, I saw it. You can do it with a book. I believe you. Just do it with a book. Can you do it with well, yourself? Can you flip or something? I mean, that's different from the first thing you did. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, can you explain the difference? Look at how this, well. this just goes like this. Okay. Oh, here we go. Even better. Look at how the tennis racket. Yeah, it's really cool. All right, so here we go. This is, this is one. This, uh, I'll show the principal axes first. So this is one principal axis. See how it yeah, yeah. smooth. Um, I can't really flip it with the tennis racket. Yeah, we get it. You can. Well, yeah, there you go. This is what I did. Uh, see how it flipped? Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is the intermediate axis. That's what we studied. And so what we did was is we took uh, lots of planks of wood um, and we test we tested how dimension affects the intermediate axis in the spinning wheel. So. Uh, Block of wood, we'll have three axes. And so, yeah, when you spin it one way, it'll do the. So we define flip as the normal way you will flip it is this. And then the spin is when it rotates, the weird way. This. So. Yeah. And so we had Cross's iPhone 5S with the slow motion rolling capability. Um, eight pieces of wood. Uh, we had five of the same height and width, but different lengths. And then three of the same length and height, but different widths. And we only had three because they cost money to do. We had to go to Lowe's and pay for whole planks of wood that we only got this much out of. Which is a bit of a bummer, but yeah, it was like ten dollars. No, but we had wood. <laughs> it would have come out to be twenty. We didn't have to buy the uh, lights. Yeah, Cross had a large. We just saw it. Yeah. For someone replicating the experiment. Yeah. <laughs> Why was there a frog? <laughs> Don't ask questions. <laughs> so, so this yeah. is so this, this is gonna be the experiment in space. Did you guys go to space? Yeah. It's kind of. Is this a time lapse or was it moving incredibly fast? This is regular speed, I think. So this is moving around oh, its intermediate what? axis. At least in space, that. so. That's so cool. Why is it going up? It's literally moving in every single direction. And this is in slow motion. Wow, so yeah, wow that's, that's cool. kind of well. That's insane. That's what happened to your piece of wood. No. Well. Quick, quick note about why it's called the intermediate axis. Um, so when you flip it like this, it has the most inertia. And when you flip it like this, it has the least inertia. But when you flip it like this, it has the intermediate amount of inertia. Hello, I'm Sunny Williams. I'm up here on the intermediate axis. <laughs> so this is no... <laughs> Crossy sounded different for a second. Yeah. <laughs> is this a frog again? Yeah, so what we're doing is um, we're increasing the length by keeping everything just the same. And we also increase the width. And we were counting spins per flip. So we had cross filming, and I would throw, it up, throw a piece of wood. Yeah. 
Um, and we couldn't keep force constant, which actually doesn't matter because our dependent variable was spins per flip. <gasps> so if you only pass it, it would just spin. So that's what it looked like. Oh, this is a jack. I mean, me. This is our data. So, yeah. As the length increased, um, it became more stable, which means it didn't flip as much. It rotated normally. That's the length increased. And then the same thing happened for width. Where are these points? Can Lewis work? No. Sorry. No. <laughs> 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 There's a point right there. Oh, yeah. Wait, I have a question. What's that one? The one right there by Jack? Um, it doesn't look like it fits with the other ones. Yeah, it does. It's a bum. I mean, like, <laughs> we'd like to be lower, but there's error. That was like a huge, huge plane. plane. Maybe it's a parabola. A huge plane? How did you flip like it? Six I went like this. How big was it? Like 20 feet? We'll, we'll talk about why we think it was higher when, higher than we expected later on. Okay. Because we have an explanation. So yeah, do you see the points? Yeah. If I squint, oh. like real um, hard? See these one, points? two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. Do you hear it? Okay. We did I believe this you. This is the average. Okay. And then, you know, Never <laughs> flipping the wood because it's more the spins were more imperfect, which is why we think the really long plank was weird because it didn't have very much width compared to its length, and so it could have been really easy to push down on one side more because that was using two hands it's so big, which would cause it to rotate. So like when we did it outside, some of the that would make it less stable. There was wind, and incorrect measurements would. Uh, and then it was hard to analyze the videos. Kind of. So, as the length increased, um, the stability increased. And uh, same thing happened for width. And what we concluded was that as length increased, the intermediate axis, axis behaved more like the axis with the, um, uh, whoops. It behaved more like one of the other axes and when the width increased. More. So if you imagine, if you were to imagine the width of this, <laughs> The width, <laughs> the width of this change. <coughs> Originally it's like this, and then all of a sudden the width, we, we increased the width to the length of the room. It's like a, like a bed. Yeah, a now it's behaving more like this, and it has at least inertia. And if you were to increase the length, the length of the room, now it's behaving more like this, and it's closer to the principal axis. What if you have a square? That's like what I was going to say. Sorry. Yeah, that's, no, it's okay. It's well, then there wouldn't be one intermediate axis. There would not be one intermediate like axis? They're like rotating, rotating it about any of its axes. It would all be the same. It would be the same in two. So would you say there that like, two. would you say that there's like a sweet spot between like with the length and width ratio that would give you like the best intermediate axis performance? Mm -hmm. How would you define that? Yeah, can you do an optimization? I don't know. <laughs> like right now, I, that was just that was just a question. Like, because you said that um, the axis, the intermediate axis, would start behaving more like the, another axis if like one of the dimensions got really really big. And so, like, if you had, like, could you find a way where the intermediate axis, I don't know, behaves the most intermediate? -y? I don't know. The most spins per flip, right? Yeah, sure. Isn't that your quantization of this? Uh, yeah, I guess. In theory, that would be when uh, the I guess in turn this would be when the length and the width are the same. Uh, but we we didn't test that. We we would have liked to have tested that. Okay. Sorry. That's a square. Yeah. And the length and width are the same. Yeah. But you just said that doesn't do it. What do you want? Yeah, Jack's wrong. 
<laughs> step in here, Cross. Step in. What do you mean? I, said, um, I didn't say it doesn't do well, it. What? We can only increase the width to a certain point before it's no longer the intermediate axis. Yeah, it's the intermediate because it's got the intermediate amount of inertia compared to the other axes, and when all the axes are the same, there is no intermediate. They're all the same. But you could increase the length further, so it's probably a, it's probably a point between infinity and one. The ratio. <laughs> 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 the ratio between this and this. Unstable. <laughs> That's the best answer I've ever heard. Answer your question, Sabrina. <laughs> I mean, it restates my question. No, when, it, when this gets really big, it's stable, and when it gets close to one, it's also stable. So there's a point between. Which is you? It gets more stable. Oh once, it's, once it's lower than one, it's no longer the intermediate axis. Is what I'm trying to say. That's what you were trying to. Are you getting mad, Cross? Maybe you can see what I'm trying to say. Just, oh, at a certain so point, this is no longer going to be the intermediate axis once it's lower than one. Mm -hmm. But we see that it gets more stable as it approaches one. And it also gets more stable as it approaches infinity. So what I was saying was, it's probably most unstable at some point. That was my question, yeah. Some point Maybe like half one. of infinity. <laughs> like halfway between one and two. It would be a really interesting extension to your lab to find that. Yep. I think that'd be really cool. Thanks, guys. Can you... Oh, sorry. Oh, more, oh. more future. Sorry. In the future, we would uh, flip the wood higher so there'd be more flips per, and we could get more spins per flip, more data. Can you define spin and flip? We did. <laughs> <laughs> this is a flip when it's normal. And then a spin is one. Oh, okay. How did you count that? Is it like we videotaped it? it? Oh, I'm the asking questions. Like, what's the noise with me? He's in the camera all the time. Why? Why is? Why are there frogs? It was kind of hard to do because I had to crop it. You had to what? I'm sorry. I don't think about it. Crop it in a way. Is that a real frog or is that like a mirrored frog? Yeah, it's a mirrored frog. Is it a frog and the same half? So it's a perfect. What kind of frog is that? Is that a bullfrog? It's a perfect. And then if we could, you know, like do it without gravity, because gravity doesn't, it would just make it flip less. So ideally, it's one air resistance. Don't want that. Semester two, send Cross and Jack to space. Done. Go fund me. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, so we did our lab on the intermediate axis theorem, otherwise known as the tennis racket theorem. Who's that? This is Roger Federer. He plays tennis. So this lab um, originated from all the board, board times I was in tennis practice and I would just sit there and kind of flip my racket up in the air and uh, I noticed... Well, I mean, I don't think that's different from the first thing you did. Yeah. yeah like, can you explain the difference? Look at how this, this just goes like this. Okay. Oh, here we go. Even better. Look how tennis racket. Alright, so here we go. This is, this is one. This, uh, I'll show the principal axes first. So this is one principal axis. See how it yeah, yeah. scoops that when I held it like this with the racket parallel, the frame parallel to the ground, when I threw it up, it would rotate in the air uh, when I hadn't even put any force on that axis, and I was curious as to why. And so this is what we studied. And um, after some research, we learned about the intermediate axis theorem. And so if you take this bad boy, you'll see that there are three axes on which you could flip it, there's this way, it's nice and smooth, and then this way, 
And then there's also this way in which it, did you guys see that, how it turned in the air? No. Can you do it again? Yeah. Yeah. One more time. Let me get a book. Yeah? No. No. Yeah, yeah I, I saw it. You can do it with a book. I believe you. Do it with a book. Can you do it with a book? Well, yourself? book might not see that. Can you flip it? Can you? Um, I can't really flip it with a tennis racket. No, but we get it. You can? Well. Yeah, there you go. <coughs> and then this is what I did. Did you see how it flipped? Yeah. yeah. All right, so this is the intermediate <coughs> axis. That's what we studied. And so what we did was, is we took uh, lots of planks of wood, um, and we, test, we tested how dimension affects the immediate axis in the spinning the air.